Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, and I am your host, Nathaniel Rufflejance, joined as always by... Eric Moore. And this is it. This is the week that we essentially have been waiting for almost since the start of this very podcast. Oh yeah. The Switch comes out, baby. (laughs) It comes out. So for our video viewers, just so you know... We're only doing four topics this week because we do not want to release a podcast on Friday. Right. Because anything we talk about isn't really going to matter by, by Friday, is it? No, not Breath at all. of the Wild, 1-2 Switch, Bomberman, uh, Snipper Clips, all the crazy games coming out, and then obviously the Switch itself. By then, anything we talk about is going to feel antiquated to me. And that's not anything. Obviously, we could say we could talk about retro stuff, but we could come up with something. But let's be honest. We're going to be live streaming like crazy that day all weekend doing lots of stuff, so there's going to be so much content coming your way from Friday through the weekend that the podcast is just going to feel irrelevant right? during that time. Right, right, yeah. A- at least for now. Obviously, listen next week because that's when we'll have a lot of impressions and a lot of stuff. But uh, we are going to do our best to kind of hype things up for the Switch because we're hyped. Oh, yeah. And that kind of gets to our first topic this week, which is how hyped we are for the Switch. Woo. So... Let's just, we've, we've talked in the past about, you know, what excites us and, and everything about it. Um, so, the, some previews have now come out for it, uh, and also for Breath of the Wild, which we'll get into on the next topic. Uh, but what, what I want to know from your end is, this is like the first Nintendo console you've probably gotten at launch, maybe ever. Mm, yep. Because, I mean, you have a 3DS, but that wasn't at launch. Yeah, so. no. So, we obviously know Breath of the Wild's the number one thing that sold you. Yep. Number one thing. But well, what about the hardware itself excites you? Hmm. I, I, I like the fact that it's a console that you can just get up and go. And well, what, what situations do you see yourself using it? Because I've always said it's like nice to take up and go, but we live in Wisconsin. We have to personally drive ourselves everywhere. So, it's not like something we're going to use while we're driving. Well, right, right. Um... Well, I know I'll be playing it over my lunch hour at work. <laughs> I can definitely tell you that. Um, uh, I don't know. Just apparently you can go out and go for walks with it. That's going to be nice. I mean, yes, you can do that with like your 3DS and whatnot, but this is like an actual home console. Nice, large screen. Great graphics. You know, that's the part that I'm actually looking forward to. Nice. Um, for me, it's kind of a catch-22 because i was always going to get the switch day one because i we do this podcast i run a nintendo yeah. site i'm technically still editor-in-chief at zelda informer at the time of launch the breath of the wild is kind of a big deal um beyond just my personal hype for it um i feel like as editor-in-chief of a zelda site it's kind of important i play the latest zelda game on the latest hardware um, especially since it's 900p in docked mode versus the 720p that it's going to be at wii u um Plus, I assume there's better frame rates. We don't really know. Better draw distances. We don't really know because we haven't seen any Wii U previews. Yet. Every preview's been to the Switch well, version. Well, I mean, we've technically played the Wii U version. I know. But there is one thing we know about the Wii U version, but I'll bring that up in the next topic. All right. Uh, but what we know right now about the Switch in terms of the positives is that it does seamlessly transition from TV to on the go. Yeah. Um, and I know... I watched this earlier today. I watched this teens react to the Nintendo Switch, where they showed off the Switch reveal, a couple of Switch commercials, and uh, some of the teen reactions were like, "Yeah, like it looks very smooth and everything, but there's no way it's that smooth." It yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Previews say it. It is. You literally dock it, and it's on your TV in less than a second. You undock it, it's on your screen in less than a second. Like it is that smooth. They were not BSing you. Um, and that's impressive. Because, yeah, that it is, actually. Uh, we, we've had some supposed clock speeds and stuff confirmed by Eurogamer because there was like a recent update. One of their developer contacts, there was like a recent update to the Switch that made handheld mode get a 25% boost um, in GPU power. Now everyone's like, oh, so it's 25% better than dock mode? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Because no. dock mode is supposedly running at 768 megahertz and original handheld mode was only running at 300 and now there's an option in handheld mode to run it at 380 something or whatever so it's like a 25 percent boost and it's like that's great 
That's that, that's cool. Um, and knowing all that, there's a few takeaways from this because, like you mentioned, you know, great graphics, home console, and portable. Um, I think it's important to to frame this conversation when it comes to that kind of talk because it's not as powerful as other home consoles, not even close. And Nintendo's keep keeps home console, home console, the home right. console, yeah, because that's what Nintendo's that's what they're pushing in their marketing. But it's important we recognize this thing for what it really is. The most powerful tablet on the market. Oh, yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, even more powerful than the Game Shield and all of a sudden the video trying to do. It's supposedly even better than that. So it is the most powerful tablet on the market for gaming purposes. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper than all the other powerful tablets out there. Yeah. That run $800, $900,000 at times to get a powerful tablet. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, those have the benefit of they're not just for gaming. So you have an app right. store, yeah. you have proper yeah. web browsing, you have Netflix at launch. I said, like, but that's because those are multi-purpose tablets. Right. For gaming-specific reasons, this is the best. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would agree. And, you know, I have a feeling that in the future here, probably not too far off, you're going to probably have Netflix. You're going to probably have oh, a yeah. decent web browser. You're going to have... And that's the thing. Uh, some people brought up, you know, like we found out last week, you know, no virtual console at launch. And it's like... Oh, okay. Does it matter at launch? At launch, to me, it does not matter. What matters well, to me... I, I think the main reason why it doesn't matter to me right now is because I'm going to be so involved with Breath of the Wild that it's... Well, that's the thing. It's at launch, not going to matter. You're not, you don't buy a console at launch for Virtual Console. Like, that's the thing. Like, yeah, no. You're, if you're buying it at launch, it's because there's a game or two that you really want to play. In this case, Breath of the Wild. So, I don't really care that there's no Virtual Console at launch. And you can bring that up as a negative maybe later because one of the topics we'll be talking about, maybe some things we're worried about. But... The only thing that worries about with me with the virtual console is just that we don't know anything. It's not that we, we know what's going to happen. We just don't know anything. Yeah. So, but the thing is, no virtual console at launch, no Netflix, no all this stuff. It doesn't bother me at launch. Right. So that's the thing. So for uh, what I like about, this is actually something I like about the launch. And I, and I hate saying like because obviously I'd rather have all that stuff at launch. But I like that the focus on this system when it comes out, because it is a tablet, and that's going to be the first thing people think is what other tablet things I use it for. Yep. They are literally saying, this is a gaming machine, period. Yep. You are yep. not buying this thing unless you want to play games. Right. You're not buying this so you can run Netflix. Not buying it for the... You are buying it to play games, period. Yeah. Um, and that's... It's kind of interesting because in the past, if you look at some of the mass market sellers out there beyond Wii, like PlayStation 2 blew up because you could play DVDs on it. So you could justify, I'm buying this thing to play games and play DVDs. Right. PlayStation right. 3 have Blu-ray players, so I'm buying this for Blu-rays and, and for games. And for games, yep. Um, you're buying the PlayStation 1 to play music CDs on your TV and to play games. Yep. Yeah, you're buying an Xbox One S, like I did. Not because I cared about anything else with the 4K, except for the fact that it has a 4K Blu-ray player. Yeah. And 4K Blu-ray players are even more expensive than the Xbox One S. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm actually getting it cheaper. Yeah, Um. So sure. it's like... You, you you look at all these other reasons that people buy electronics because they're multi-purpose. And Nintendo's like, look, there's other tablets out there. We're not trying to be them. Right. We're not trying to be the 4K PS4 Pro Scorpio or even the 4K Blu-ray player. Although, it as we read in the spec sheet or whatever in the leaked document, it does support 4K video out for like Netflix type services. So it is potential that we do get 4K Netflix with it, which will be nice. Yeah, yeah. But... But that's not the primary purpose. That's just kind of an aside, like, oh, it happens to support that, but no one cares at Nintendo. <laughs> it's just kind of, it does it because it's not going to be used for gaming. Right. Um, whereas, like, the Xbox One S can upscale everything to 4K. It just, it's, it's just upscaling. That's it. So I look at it as, for me as a gamer, I don't know how this is going to hit with mass consumers. I just said all these other things were massively successful because of the multifunction right. stuff. It's, cheaper to get that multifunctionality than it is to get the individual functionality so i think that's why this system is specifically made for gamers yeah and i know a lot of people like nintendo's trying to go blue ocean again are they really because what's so blue ocean about this project at launch the fact that you could take it on the go and at home what gamer doesn't want to do that well right right exactly and on top of that it doesn't have any of the services that other people want at launch yeah so the only people buying it are people that want to play games yeah yeah that's that, Man, that's yeah. something that excites me about that because this is a, Nintendo's continued renewed focus on games and the renewed focus on making something that matters for gamers. 
as an example, I remember back when it was rumored at the time that it would have cartridges. We now know it does. Uh, that that was viewed as a negative. Like, oh, cartridges, why would you do that? So much cheaper with this and blah, 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 blah. I, it's better for gaming. Yeah. Yeah, I never knew why they kind of went. I mean, I get it because CDs were the newest thing. and Well, they like that. the CDs happened. There was a few reasons. One, they were really cheap. Cartridges yeah, are that. more expensive than C, especially back then, like N64 days. Yeah, yeah. The, you, the, you spend 10 cents and get 100 CDs versus one cartridge was like freaking 10 bucks to produce. Yeah. So it it was a lot cheaper, and at the time, they held a lot more data. Right. So, like, CDs made a lot of sense. But even with, with the Blu-ray discs on, like, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, that all made sense. Yeah. Because they hold more data, and they're cheap to produce. And they output at, you know, like in case of like Blu-rays, you can output very high quality stuff. Yeah. Um, not 4K unless it's a 4K Blu-ray disc, which novels do exist. But um, it was still really, really nice. And so it was always cost to performance, cost to performance, cost to performance. Yep. And what happened with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One is they started becoming what I call living room PCs. Yeah. That's basically what yeah. they are, because what they started doing is stripping away a lot of the conveniences of home consoles, because PC gaming's at an all-time, it's just getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the day that Switch comes out, so does the Ryzen CPUs, and that's AMD's new line of CPUs, which you probably haven't done a lot of research into, nope. but um, I know just based on what AMD's telling us, no one's done any benchmarking themselves yet, so we just have AMD benchmarks to work with, that they are not only cheaper... They are better than a lot of comparable uh, CPUs out of Intel. Now, are they beating Intel's top, top, top tier stuff? Of course not, but they don't have anything released at that price point. Right. Like, one of their CPUs was a 6-core or an 8-core or something CPU that was like 350 bucks, and that was beating out a $1,000 CPU out of Intel. Wow. So it's like... Wow. The AMD's just about to change the game and make everything cheaper again. And this is before they get their new GPU line, which is supposed to come out later this year, which supposedly performs really well. Um, again, we don't have enough information yet, but the point is that PC gaming is getting cheaper. Mm -hmm. And it's getting easier and easier, even if you don't feel comfortable building a PC, which I understand why. Like, our PC build took a long time uh, for us, but that we use to edit all this stuff. Right. But, like... It would take a. It, I, I could see us doing it in under an hour easily. Next oh, time. yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and I could see us pulling off in under a half hour, to be honest. Now I, we know what we're doing. Well, it's right. Just, there's a lot of. We didn't have as much experience lately putting PCs together. Right. I used to put, do a lot when I was younger. And so, you know, what tools I need, usually you just need a Phillips head, but then there was things like, oh, I didn't consider out my placement of the radiator before I right. the GPU. Yep. And like, all, all this kind of stuff. And then worrying about, oh, did I break the CPU socket? No, I really didn't, but I just haven't right. messed with a, a, a newish motherboard in the last 10 years. So right. Like, yeah, I, yeah. No. Um, so now that I have all the experience, it's like, oh, I can put, the, put that together the computer again. Like well, that. that and at the time, we were also really worried about actually breaking something yeah, and because. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because and especially now that I've done more research, like it's really hard to break a piece. Even if well, we didn't have static bands, it's extremely hard to actually burn something yeah, out from static. Yeah. Um, and if you're actually concerned, all you have to do is just plug in the power supply and just touch it randomly. Yeah. And, it, and it decharges you. Um, but anyways, we were going to take the extra precautions because $1,800 is not break oh, it. Right, right. And especially um, considering that it was going to be a rig to yeah. do what it but, does but anyways that's that's at the high end most pc gamers are at the low end you're talking under 500 dollars, and you're talking about consoles that cost 400 500 dollars um and so why would you get a home console over it well convenience right you know that that's ultimately what home console gaming's always provided is convenience over pc gaming pc gaming's always been ahead visually it's always been ahead control wise because oh there's motion controls yeah you can make those work with your pc yeah so like there's nothing that the consoles can do that PCs can't. And PCs now have easy ability to hook up. You can buy living room PCs now. Like, easy ability to hook up to your TV, media centers, etc. Um, stuff that's always been around, but usually took a tech head to figure out. Now it's becoming more consumer friendly. Right, yeah. Um, and it, it even started kind of going, dating back to maybe the uh, Microsoft XP days um, when they used to, were starting to sell media remotes with some of their stuff, and you could use their media center with the remote on your TV. Yeah. Um, but again, it wasn't, it wasn't popular back then. PCs were still kind of expensive. Now now it's cheapening out. Um, and PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, as much as I enjoy, especially the Xbox One because that's the one I own, um, installs suck. Yeah. 
their patches suck, especially apparently on the PlayStation 4. They purposely limit the download speed. <laughs> so, like, it's Why? really slow. So you can have, like, a one gig day one update, and you might not get to play for eight hours. Why? That. Yeah, it, it's stupid. So it, gaming's becoming less and less convenient, unless you're a digital purchaser and you preload everything. So, like, if you yeah, but buy, even then. If you buy, like, say you buy the new Madden game, you preload it. Well, you're downloading it before it comes out, so of course you can play it right away at midnight. Yeah, but are you still allowed to play other things while you're actually downloading it? Well, yeah. I mean, you can okay. play it. You, you can. Yeah. Okay. They, they let you multitask. Okay. Um, and you, you can play online. Obviously, you got. I don't know. I think it actually pauses the download while you play an online game on those systems. Uh, it's been a while since I've done yeah, an actual yeah. digital download. I usually buy physical. Um, I like having resale value because a lot of the games I play are things like yearly releases, like Madden. Yeah. I'm gonna resell it, you know, whatever. <laughs> for the only ten bucks, and then yeah. they're gonna turn around to sell for like yeah. twenty, what twenty-five. Well, it's if like, they what the hell? never sell it, you know, yeah. copies of Madden. Most of the stores I'm sitting around because no one buys them. Buys the old copies. Uh, anyways, so I, I I kind of turned that all around to the Switch, and where I was talking about it being a gaming focused platform. And think about the thing that Switch is doing. One, it doesn't have all this extra stuff at launch, so it's definitely only targeted at people who want to play games. Yep. Um, two, it's convenient. Oh yeah. The whole thing of in the dock, on the go, that's one convenience. The other convenience is pop in the cartridge and play. Yeah. Done. Yeah, right. And no installs. Like, updates will download in the background. Yeah. That was one thing we learned, we learned with the rest of the wild people who have it is if there's an update that comes out, it's downloading in the background. You can still keep playing. Oh, wow. That's nice. And, and the thing is, that is nice. you can do that with other games. Obviously, another system, I just said that. But, again, it feels like it's better on the Switch. Because of the fact that I also didn't have to install the game to play it. Yeah. You just yep. pop the cartridge in and you go. That, and it, to me, cartridges seem a lot more rugged. Like, you drop a CD yeah. and you well, r- run the risk of there, there's also scratching the, con- the, the crap out of that it. These cartridges are actually smaller than the 3DS cartridges. Oh, really? Yes. Whew. So, like, even easier to lose. Uh, kind of yeah, considering um, I, can, I can pretty well lose my 3DS I mean, cartridges fairly easy. Obviously, I'm going to be keeping everything in, you know, because like, we have the special edition Breath of the Wild. So, yep. so if there, yeah. I'm hoping there's a game pouch in there. So we uh, I, think, I think there and is. And if there isn't, then I'm going to buy one. Of the, they have like a little hard separate case that I can just set on my desk and it can hold like 20 games. Yeah, oh, and, and that's so hopefully can f- hopefully fit in there. And obviously, you can always just keep them in their cases and put them on your shelf too. That's uh, always Well, right, option. but who does but that? I, I have children, <laughs> so like I'll have the cases on my shelf or maybe someday in the background of my videos but i'm not gonna keep the games in there yeah um, i I have, I have children i gotta keep them out of reach but it, it's all to me about convenience for gamers and that's what i really really love about this console uh you know everything about it just feels convenient from the fact that you have what you need to play it on the go right away but also to play it with a traditional hole because it gives you a grip lets you take the joy cons off put them in there mm-hmm. you want to play your Wii, your Wii games you want to play uh, you want to play traditionally with Breath of the Wild, but then you want to play Just Dance. You, the controllers already are what you need for Just Dance. Mm-hmm. You want to play two-player Mario Kart. It may not be the ideal way to play it, but you already have two controllers. Um, as I said, not maybe not the ideal way, but it's there. You don't have to buy more if you don't want to to play two-player. Um, it has the convenience of if we want to play Mario Kart together, our Switches can go together and we can have our own screen for everything. We don't have to split screen. Yep. Uh, same for Splatoon. Same for, for probably any game Nintendo releases that's multiplayer. Anyways, yeah. I assume yeah. you're going to take advantage of local local wireless connections. So everything just feels convenient. Mm-hmm. And convenience as a gamer, as a consumer, matters a lot to me. And oh, that's yeah. maybe what I'm most excited about beyond the games. Games are ultimately why you buy it. Like... You're buying it because it's got Breath of the Wild. You're buying it because of Bomberman. You're buying it because of Super Mario Odyssey or Mario Kart. Or like, there's all these games that make you want to buy it. But what makes me confident in buying it is that it's providing me something that there is nothing else that provides it. 3DS does provide some of it. I'll pop into cartridges and play. Right. Um, but even then, 3DS also feels extremely dated. It's very clunky and slow at times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it definitely slow at downloading updates. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, that it, that it is. It, it, I can't play it on my TV. So, like, there's all these things, or I can't play them, like, some people can. You can't play it on your TV in a convenient fashion. Um, you can buy add-ons and jerry rig things. Yeah. Just like, it's, uh, just like I have it, I have a modded 3DS so I can record uh, footage off of it. So, technically, that also makes it easier to hook up to my TV, but I'm, that's, that's, yeah. that's, it's also really expensive. So, that's not something I suggest. For Again, not consumers. convenient. That's what I'm saying. Like, the 3DS is nice. It works for what it is, mm-hmm. which, personally... I think since they're keeping the 3DS going, uh, at least for another year or two, that uh, I think they should repurpose its marketing. I think it should be marketed at children, 
whereas this should be marketed at adults for the Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. they should take the 3DS and be like, look, kids don't control the TV. Parents control the TV. So kids can control their handheld. Yep. And it's cheaper. You yeah, can, that it you is. can get like 2DS units for under 100 bucks easily at many places. 3DS yeah. units for under 150 in many yeah. places. And kids kind of just have the cool thing you toss in your backpack. You're not really going to toss a Switch in your backpack and bring it to school. At least you should not yeah, toss yeah. a Switch in your no. backpack and bring it to elementary yeah, no. school. No. College is fine. Proper case, but don't bring it to elementary <laughs> school. You're going to get so much trouble playing that thing there. Um, and if someone steals it, you're going to... Yeah, a good yeah that's not a good, good um, thing. College kids, that's your own risk. Yeah, right. That is what it is. You control it. Um, even high school kids, it's their own risk. Like I know some high schools let you carry your backpacks around with you all the time. I personally wouldn't do that because I don't want to. Well, I wouldn't, ca- I wouldn't carry it around in my backpack. I'd rather my locker that's locked. Oh, yeah, definitely. And just take things that I need in between classes. But some kids like carrying everything everywhere. I, I found that out even when I was in, at – I went to a private school, and we still had kids that were like, oh, I'm going to bring every, everything with me everywhere. And I'm like, I guess I get that for security purposes. Or, like, I guess you never forget anything, but it's like – Yeah. Yeah. That, dude, how many – school books are heavy. Yeah, that they are. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. No thanks. I'll just bring my one book to my one class. Not I know. I, eight <laughs> books to one class. Yeah, I know. I, I kind of went half a day, half a day type of thing where I'd stop in after lunch and switch out my books for the back half of the day compared to the front half of the day. Yeah, so That's I That's kind of how I ran it. I don't know. I, I'm excited for this system because it's just – Really, everything about it feels convenient. The thing is, like, you brought up a situation where you're going to use it, like, on the go. The only situations I think I'm going to use it on the go, either A, if we go on an airplane, like, we go back to E3, plane flight. Oh, yeah. Uh, we drive, so we go to a Bucks game in Milwaukee. One of us drives down, one drives back, the other one gets to play Switch. Like, right. that's great. Yep. Um, like, there's all these convenient things that you can use it for. But I think the most time I'm going to either use it is, one, when I'm going to the bathroom. Yeah. I don't have to stop. <laughs> like, yep. I, always, I always, like, browse and stuff on my phone. I mean, I, I might still do both. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. that's one of those things, like, I keep thinking, all these things I do with my phone now, I'm going to be kind of doing with my Switch. Like, listen, listen to sports like, like, radio like, while cool. playing. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing I'm playing baseball game on my phone. No, I'm not. I'm playing Breath of the Wild. Though. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and in, in bed. I think in yep. bed, it's just yeah. going to be nice. Yeah. Um, and this is all the times, too. Like, um, you know, we like sports. So instead of us taking over the TV to play Madden, we could play... Madden, Madden on her. A thing, and I'm playing against you, you're playing against me. And what's nice about us having two of them is that if Madden does come out, we can actually do like, the online server thing and get yeah, the fast right? simi. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. We do a lot of simi. So yeah. Like, yeah. That's the one. He doesn't own the Xbox. So, like, when we do the simi, we can't do it over. Because online, their online servers have really, really fast simi compared to their local console. Um, anyways, we're, you guys <laughs> don't care about yeah. that. That's something that, that I'll care about, but if, if Madden comes out for it. Uh, but yeah, it's. I'm just really excited. I, I don't know if the excitement's coming through because it's just I'm, I'm still in a state of disbelief. Right, that we're under a week out. Like it's happening. Yeah, everything's paid off. It's happening. We're gonna be there. Yeah. Like, it sucks for you because you gotta basically go home and go to bed right away. But uh, yeah, yeah, cause, yeah. Because I'm I'm coming home. Like, like. But well, let's end end this topic with talking about. What are we doing day one with that switch? I, you, you tell you tell me what your plans are. You have uh, to go to work. So I, I'm I'm charging it home while I sleep, and then taking it to work and playing it over my lunch tower. That's what I'm doing. Nice, nice. Um, so me, I get to take mine home and film an unboxing. Woo! And then film another unboxing of the Breath of the Wild Special Edition. Woo! And then. <laughs> Hook it up to my streaming setup and pray it all works. <laughs> right. I, like, I'm not going to record, like, setting up. Like, there's plenty of videos out there setting up the Switch and everything, so I'm not going to record any videos of that. But um, the next time you'll see me after that point, we'll literally be playing with the Switch on Breath of the Wild on, on the live stream. So, I mean, hopefully I'll get those videos edited. Um, if you come over Friday night. Working. Yeah, so you're working, so Saturday, whenever you get a chance to come over. That's yeah, when I'll finally yeah. get to sit down and edit those videos right. and get them out. So hopefully I have them out that, that weekend. I would love to get them out the same day, but we'll kind of see it. We'll kind of see how it goes because <sighs> I really want to just get straight in the live stream and play Breath of the Wild. I don't really want to waste all this time editing videos. Yeah, right, I don't even right. really want to yeah. record the unboxings, but since I, I can't yeah, live stream yeah, right, without yeah, unboxing yeah. anyways, I might as well record it. Um, so that's my day one. And then day two, again, more live streaming. More live streaming, more live streaming, just live yeah. streaming like crazy. And then finally, I think by day three is when I'll finally get more experience with the system undocked and doing other stuff. 
whether it's playing other games, whether it's trying to browse the internet. There's no web browser, but maybe they have. There's someone talked about there might be a de- developer way around it. So I might try to see if I can get into the developer <laughs> mode and get around it and try to browse the internet, just to see if I can do it. Um, because you know maybe it's a situation where every Switch is a dev unit, just like every Xbox One is a dev unit. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. Know. It's one of those things. One thing I am debating. You guys can let me know in the comments. Is if you want me to do like a, like a Facebook or YouTube live, of like literally us walking to the store and getting into it. I was kind of thinking that. But like, but. I, like it's up to you guys. If you want to see? Because I'm going to be so pumped. I don't know if I'm going to be first in line because I'm not going out hours early because I already have it pre-ordered. But I'll be out there about 30 minutes early and be you know obviously among the people getting. It. I'm just. I'm debating if that's something if you guys would be interested in seeing the live reactions to us getting it and the excitement and everything, and then obviously getting in the car and looking at a little loot and being like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, right. It's yeah. right here. Yeah, right. You have to go to bed. That sucks. I'm going. Over. <laughs> Let's go. Well, you never know. I might end up staying over here and just <laughs> sleeping for Sleep, like sleeping. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then yeah. obviously you work and then work. So yeah, I, I'm going to be at work from probably eight thirty to midnight. Yeah. So, so he's. He's pretty much dead until maybe sometime on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, um, right. Until he gets super addicted to Breath of the Wild and then he's still asleep. Yeah, right. Which could happen. 